Well, Ray, I'm not advocating necessarily. We're waiting for the legislature. Taxes are a difficult situation because if you have a new tax and you implement, try to implement something, you wouldn't get the revenue in time. But before that can even be discussed in your revenue stream, uh, it's clear that you need one Republican vote in the Senate. And I don't know if that vote is there. Uh, if it is there and they present a revenue package to me, I'm happy to look at it. Um, you know, you had a list of different kind of proposals to address the budget shortfall. One of them uh, was furloughing employees. We also know that there will be around 700 positions that will be vacant. So which agencies do you see being the most impacted? Well, you know, all agencies are going to feel the result of some of the cuts that we're facing. I think that's inevitable and everybody's going to share in the, the pain and the sacrifices it's related to. This is not something that I take lightly or I'm happy about doing. A lot of thought went into this and hopefully we're going to come up with a solution that's going to be the least painful and have the least impact on individuals' lives and our employees. Um, in terms of those employees, are we thinking health and human services, uh, education, in terms of you know, the most impacted? Well, as I said, all departments are going to be impacted. How they were able to uh, manage the cuts that we requested of them was left up to the individual agencies. We gave them flexibility and they made decisions that were in the best interest of the department, the agency, and the general public, and, and I'll deal with them. Another one of the proposals was transferring some funds from you know, other areas to the general fund. Mm -hmm. um, do you expect any of those um, appropriations to be sticking points and hearing any, about any issues with any of those? Well, that's up to the legislature. You know, they got here uh, yesterday and today and they took uh, went into session this morning early. Uh, they're going to have to make those calls. You know, we presented them with a proposal and hopefully they're agreeable to it. If they want to make adjustments, I fully understand that and we'll deal with whatever they come up with. Uh, you know, if they have a particular idea of what they want to do, is there a conversation you'll try to have with them or is it, how does, how well, do, we've how been, do they negotiate? Yeah, we've been open the entire time to discussing with the legislative leadership. I mean, some have been more forthcoming than others, some individuals. Some individuals have not provided any ideas or just critical of my proposals. Uh, anything that they come up with, we're willing to discuss. I'm interested in what's in the best well-being of our citizens, of our children, of our employees, of our state. These are unprecedented, uncharted times that we're dealing with. And we have to all uh, be as thoughtful as we possibly can with the understanding that there's going to be impacts from these cuts. It's inevitable that there's going to be impacts when you cut out a quarter of our budget. Another impact is on uh, Medicaid. It looks like a couple million dollars in Medicaid funding being cut. So how is that uh, being prioritized, prioritized, especially now we're in the middle of a pandemic? Well, in the middle of a pandemic, what we're, the biggest things that we're prioritizing is our health care situation, our education situation, and our state employees. That's what we're focusing on, and any revenue we'd receive would be put back into those areas. Hopefully the impacts will be as little as possible on those areas, but that being said, Every single agency and department is going to be impacted as a result of these cuts. It's just inevitable. Uh, you mentioned schools. Um, I believe uh, Zoom and Victory School money has been left alone, but there are cuts to the, I believe, extra $1,200 to low-achieving students. So how do you decide which programs like that are? Education, it's painful to look at any cut in education. It's been my priority education since we got here. Uh, I want to thank Joan Ebert, for our superintendent, for helping us to to manage a budget that's going to be painful, but we hope manageable. Uh, a lot of this is going to be left up to the individual school districts. What happens and what works in Clark doesn't necessarily work in Washoe or Esmeralda or White Pine. That's why there are 17 different counties, 17 different school boards, 17 different superintendents that are going to have to relate this. We gave them, they had authority under state statute to have flexibility. These school districts start at different times. They start different times during the day, different times in the year. There's all there's variances with the different districts. This is the same thing. They had to come up with a plan that best suits them and hopefully keeping in mind those students, those teachers, and those parents as it relates to various issues that they'll face. And I'm confident that they'll address those. So are there any areas, you know, when we talk about low achieving students, low income students, those kind of uh, programs that help those students, is anything, uh, I won't say exempt, but is anything, you know, untouchable? Well, when you're dealing with the pandemic that we're facing right now, nothing is untouchable. You're seeing that with the drastic cuts that we had to make. And I acknowledge that those cuts were drastic. A lot of this is left up to the various school districts and school boards to come up with a plan. And they can uh, be proactive and try to come up with something that works. And 
to just complain about the cuts isn't going to do any good. I mean, they have to come up with a plan. That's why they were elected. That's what they're there for. And I'm confident that if they put in the time to come up with something that will benefit our students and our parents the best way possible. Education, obviously, a very emotional issue. It's something that you ran on. So how do you, how does, is that hard for you to, to, to think about thinking that's something that was a big, is a big priority for you, but unfortunately you're going to have to... Hard doesn't begin to express how difficult this was. I mean, every single program we talked about, every single dollar that we cut out of there was extremely painful for me. I know that our teachers are underworked and overpaid. I know that our parents had to make enormous sacrifices at the end of the last year and over the summertime here. Uh, I know our students didn't get what they fully deserved. All that being said, we're doing everything we can, and we're hopeful that the federal government will come in here. I mean, we've talked about education. They've talked about another funding tranche that could come forward to help us. And if they do, hopefully we'll be able to make some adjustments and fill some of these gaps that exist currently in education. But that remains to be seen. And I know I have regular conversations with the federal delegation. They're working that, and hopefully they'll come up with a plan. I know the legislature is going to have a lot of conversations, a lot of looking at the numbers. How confident are you that, you know, we can relatively quickly come up with a balanced budget and will you be happy with it? Well, I'll be happy when they come up with one. I don't know how relatively quickly it's going to be. I began watching this morning. I'm watching the hearings the same way you are. And the presentations are about to begin. The public comment was clearly people are concerned about education. I know you've got 63 different individuals over there that have 63 different ideas and uh, a lot of priorities. And, and hopefully they'll be able to come together with something that's realistic and reasonable for everybody. And time will tell. Um, you had tweeted that, you know, after the budget is uh, kind of resolved, uh, you're planning on issuing another proclamation to tackle maybe some other issues. Mm -hmm. um, is police uh, reform uh, going to be part of that, do you believe? Well, any uh, policy issue that gets into the second session would be a result of something that's extraordinary. Uh, it would not have to be run-of-the-mill type situation that could wait until the next legislative session in February. Certainly with what's going on in the country, uh, there needs to be something done in criminal justice reform. Uh, we're talking about it with my staff. We're going to evaluate some proposals and we'll decide at the end of the uh, budget session what we're going to bring, bring forward. And if that does happen, will that happen immediately after the budget session? Yeah, a special session would hopefully happen immediately after the adjournment of the first session so that people don't have to travel back and forth. But again, you have to understand we have to maintain the flexibility. We don't know what's going to happen, how long this session is going to last with the COVID crisis of the pandemic. Uh, and I appreciate the legislators are all getting tested, they're getting screened, and thank you to the National Guard for stepping up and doing that for us. But there's a lot of unknowns when you put that many people in that building, so we're hopeful that it'll go smoothly and that we'll be able to have another session quickly right after. And then I want to circle back, you mentioned the public comment, obviously a lot of people concerned about the different cuts to the different agencies uh, and education, things like that. Um, a message to, to those people who are really concerned and just feel like the cuts aren't um, you know, obviously not helpful, but they just don't want to see that. Well, and I understand why they don't want to see it. I, I don't want to see it either. Unfortunately, that's something that's inevitable with the situation that we're dealing with, that there had to be some cuts. Our revenue just does not measure up to what we need to fund the programs and to facilitate those programs and their operational needs and necessities. Uh, everybody has different areas, whether you're a, a parent, a state employee, a, someone that deals with DHHS. I mean, there's different issues that we're dealing with. Everybody got cut. I fully understand how the state employees feel. Uh, it's important to me that they be recognized and their position be represented. And that's what this legislature is all about, to take this all into account and to analyze the proposals we brought forward and make changes that they want to, and then we'll work from there. I have, uh, we started a little early, but I have about another minute or so. Okay, but. great. Um, uh, circling back to education, we're seeing um, a union out here, signs saying, you know, uh, fund our education, support our students. Um, a message to them? Well, the message to them is that, you know, I fully understand their feelings. I mean, whether those are teachers or those are parents or those are students, this is not, these have not been easy decisions. My staff and I have spent countless hours agonizing over these cuts. Uh, if somebody's got an idea, uh, if the legislature wants to present a revenue package, I'm more than happy to look at that and willing to look at that, and we will do that. But the money doesn't grow on the trees that you see out here. You know, it's important that we be together and analyzing and hoping that the federal government will come forward with some uh, revenue to help the various states. And, and I've uh, 
I think, uh, portrayed that and explained that to our delegation and on my calls with the president and the vice president. I brought that same issue up, that it's extremely important to all the states, but particularly in Nevada, we were harder hit than anybody in terms of our unemployment, in terms of our revenue. You've seen the unemployment is one of the highest. The revenue has just fallen off a cliff. And I appreciate that people are trying to help most of the businesses and individuals by wearing face coverings and to help get our revenue stream somewhat back online. But that's going to take some time in order to do that. And we ask people's patience as we do it. And we ask for the help and consideration along the way. And I'm hopeful that uh, the various school boards will do what's necessary to protect our students and our parents. Um, in those conversations with the president and the White House, are, do you feel confident there is some movement on getting more federal funds? Well, I think that they recognize the need in having some uh, federal funding, some support from the, uh, we're not like the federal government doesn't have to balance a budget. We have to balance a budget. We have to have the revenue in order to spend it. They don't work that way. Uh, I think they understand the great need that exists. I'm hopeful that they'll take that to heart. And I was told that it's going to be addressed after they get back from the July 4th holiday, which will be in the middle of the month.